Thank you. My name is Calvin Simon. I would like to thank the Academy. I would like to thank all of our fans and our peers. All I can say is we're going to continue in 81, the same as we've done the funk ever since the beginning. Just going to continue and make it stronger and better as we can. Much success to you. Funkadelic. You know, and I would also like to thank God for sparing us to be able to receive this. Amen. Thank you very much. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Calvin Simon thought his singing career was over after being diagnosed with cancer. You may remember Calvin from his days with the band Parliament Funkadelic, but today he sings a new song. Welcome to the Harvest Show, Calvin. Thank you very much. Pleased okay. to meet you. I could, I could hardly wait to meet you <laughs> as we started playing some of your old music. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yes, for sure. I mean, <laughs> my sisters and brothers were teenagers at the time when the music came out. Tell us about Parliament Funkadelic, and then we're going to talk about what God is doing in your life today. All right. Parliament Funkadelic was uh, part of, a good part of my life, mm -hmm. and we tried to tell the story and educate people as best we could about music and having fun, and that was the key, and I think that was part of our longevity is the fact that we kept it fun. And if you notice in our concerts years ago, you never heard about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the concerts now. Because mm -hmm. everybody was too busy having fun and wanting to hook up and all kind of stuff. But with all of that feeling, there was a reason for it. And God had put me into it, even though I didn't realize it at the time. Because sometimes he can take a real bad situation and turn it into something beautiful, which it, which it is. Okay, so the group... I mean, you guys made it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, 15 yes. gold and seven platinum albums. What was it like experiencing that success on, on such a high platform? I, I think it was Prince who inducted you guys into the Hall of Fame. It was. Mm -hmm. uh, Prince, well, he was a delightful guy, uh, very, very intelligent. Uh, with that music, you go through different heights. Okay. You go through the financial end of things. Uh, you go through how you are exposed to the public. And when you become number one in the world, which we were at the time, there's a lot of different things happening. A lot of those things coming at you, you know, and you experiment with this, that, and the other. But you also, you always keep in mind, even though you didn't realize it at the time, you kept your eye on everything because there's people out there that got different frames of mind and different intentions mm -hmm. than what you have. And you get a chance to realize what fame and fortune do to people. Sometimes it's not always good. So then something happened. You, you thought your career was over, your singing career. I mean, the Parliament, Parliament Funkadelics, they were at the height of popularity. What time frame? What year was it? Uh, we were like number one, and I left in 78. Uh, okay. Uh, my heart was looking for something that the group was no longer uh, being able to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And I found myself being angry and empty. And I couldn't figure it out because I, I, I had a beautiful marriage. I had financial means. I had everything that a person could want. But it's still that hole in my heart was there that needed to be filled. Drugs couldn't do it. Women couldn't do it. Whiskey couldn't do it. But then Jesus Christ found it. Isn't it true, Calvin, that there is a God-shaped void in our lives? that only Jesus can fill. Exactly. And we have to have that relationship with him. So you were diagnosed later on with um, Well, the first thyroid. time, uh, well, I'm 100% disability vet, first of all, because oh, I wow. suffer from PTS. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, I've had a heart attack. Uh, they had to fly a hel uh, medical helicopter and to fly me to the hospital. That's how bad it was. But that's when I made the promise to him that I was going to spend the rest of my days serving him if I made it through it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I kind of dibbled and dabbled a little bit with the group, which I wasn't keeping my word like I should have. To God. Right. And that's when I developed cancer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, thyroid cancer. So they had to completely remove my thyroid, which was right next to my vocal cords. I didn't even think I would ever be able to sing again. But see, God knows what he wants from me. He put, he put it in me mm -hmm. because I was chosen. I had nothing to do with the decision of this guy. That was already made back there, but it depends on the decisions that I make along the journey, because God is here. Mm -hmm. And then you were also nursing your wife until she died. She had bone cancer. She had bone cancer. So yeah. when you when going through all of these things, was there ever a time where you just said, I'm done, I'm done with 
singing. I'm done with God. Yes. I'm just done with it all. I, there came a time when I was done with singing mm -hmm. and everything else, but I never, never felt that way about the God sense in me. Yes. But there was a time of about 10 or 14 years where I didn't want to sing. I didn't want to play. I didn't want to have nothing to do with the music at all. I mean, you went in full... Um, full throttle for God. I mean, you went in. We even have a clip of you being <laughs> baptized um, after, you know, guess rededicating your faith. I mean, your life back to Christ. Tell us about this. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, that's in the church that me and my family built in West Virginia. Wow. And it's called mm -hmm. uh, Sky Baptist. And I was the first one to get baptized uh, in the church. Wow. How long have you been born again? Uh, since 2002. Praise God for that. Now you, uh, then you dedicated your singing then to gospel music. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. I don't even deal, deal with it other at all. At all. No. So tell me about It's Not Too Late. Okay. <clears throat> it's not too late because I hadn't, since I had thyroid cancer, mm -hmm. I hadn't played or sang or anything. And then I had to nurse my wife through her, her situation. But uh, Too Late came to me in a dream. And I was sick. I was really sick. I mean, I was bleeding out of everything that you could possibly think of. But God took me to the brink, but he brought me back. Mm -hmm. In the process, there was a dream. In that dream, there was the bluest sky I've ever seen in my life. From that sky, it was gold bars coming down from both ends with rays of sunshine coming down through that. There was a white robe. I couldn't tell whether it was what, what the uh, uh, entity was, but no face, no hands, and no feet. But telepathically, I was relating to that as Jesus. Jesus was standing there next to a gray robe, and no hands, no feet, no head. And in the dream, I was waking up, and I said, oh my God, I, I can't wake up. I was trying to swim back into the dream because I wanted to let that person know that Jesus was standing right next to him. And all he had to do was turn to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I know there's somebody out there yes. that, that, that can relate to that. But it's very simple. All they had to do was just turn and say, mm -hmm. be my Lord and Savior. So you have several cuts on here. I want you to just talk maybe about one or two. Jesus is a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a friend of mine. And it's delightful for me to be able to say that because I can talk to him anytime. I don't need to go through nobody. I can just, I got a direct line. Mm -hmm. And you can just talk. And if you listen and you're quiet enough, you hear what he says. And you're going to perform for us, Needing Someone, It's Not Too Late. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that one. Uh, needing Someone, I, I happened to think about, uh, uh, I think it was Barabbas that died on the cross. Mm -hmm. And he was next to Jesus. But he had the, 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 the sense about him to realize this man hadn't done anything. So he turns to Jesus and say, remember me when you get to your kingdom. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, by the end of this day, you will be with me in paradise. Now imagine him having the intellect to be able to recognize what Jesus was all about. Power of love? <clears throat> to me, that's going to be a party forever where we all can dance and sing in that hallelujah choir. And that's what my goal is. Mm -hmm. Because one day we will be able to make a joyful noise continuously. So are you, do you also preach the gospel? I know you sing it. I'm not a preacher. Okay. But I guess they would say I'm a minister of music. Okay. Because all I talk about is his word and what he's done for me and what he can do for you. You know, Calvin, it's so interesting to hear you talk yeah. about your faith and, and you are so dedicated to it and yet you suffer from the effects of PTSD. Yes. Yeah. Um, and do, are there any other health issues that you're dealing with? I guess the point I'm making is we can worship God, can't we, mm -hmm. and be faithful to him no matter what the situation is in our lives. Isn't that true? That is absolutely true because he can bring you through anything. Mm -hmm. Because the pain that you think you're going through that you're feeling, he's already taken it. Mm -hmm. So that's a weight that you don't even have to carry anymore. He's already, hey, you got it.
Well, it has been <laughs> delightful to talk with you, Calvin. I can now put this on Facebook and say, that's who I met today. <laughs> to connect with Calvin, go to calvinsimon.net or go to harvest-tv.com for a link to his new project. It's called It's Not Too Late. Harvest continues in just a moment. Thank you.